Your use of the uh, chalkboard, uh, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> opportunity, a choice. The choice is whether you'd like to come to the lectern as the general evaluator and conduct the remaining portion of the meeting, which is the on-time programmarian and the timer support, or whether you'd like to wait, because I'd like to introduce that concept into the club more substantially. Would you like to do that? Yes. Please Thank welcome you. your general evaluator for the meeting. <laughs> What a wonderful gathering. We needed this type of gathering every once in a while, much more informal. And may if you get a chance to do a little bit more interaction. For instance, how often have we had from the very first speaker and many others audience interaction during the speech? And I want you to know that those moments were not counted off in terms of your counting in terms of timing. So when you uh, George was asked a question. Ted was later on asked a question. It didn't hurt you. Now, let's get back to the brass tacks of speaking in control. Here is the timing report. Notice this evening that one individual who's been around Toastmasters since the time that the earth cooled did three roles this evening. He was a speaker with a strict time regulations of being a competitor. He was a Toastmaster with speaking off the cuffs speaking darn near anything, keeping his mouth moving until the green light comes on, and then third, he gave an evaluation that was of help to an individual, but again, he was he had to stay within the confines of the timing. He and George are always the kind of speakers who have enough self-control that they know the lights. For the rest of us who don't have the control, <laughs> you are facing everyone twin objects. Not only are you out of control and speaking longer than your allotted time, but the way we have it set up, everybody in the house knows you're out of control. In <laughs> fact, in fact, it ought to be a hooded with dark paper or whatever. So only the speaker knows that you hit the green light, you hit the caution light, and you have the drop dead light of red. You could use like that little zapper thing and put it in their pocket. Okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> at the U.S. Supreme Court, when the red light comes on at the end of your allotted 30 minutes, you finish that word if you haven't finished the second or third uh, syllable of that word. It's that precise. And in broadcasting, you also have to be precise. A 30 second commercial must end at 28 and a half seconds to 30 seconds, and that's it. Now, I will ask and I will be brief. Anthony, how long was your speech to be? To be 15 to 20 minutes. But oh, but, but, but that's, 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 that's in Bangkok. But for Toastmasters, what were the confines of it? 15 to 20 minutes, because this is, I, I should have mentioned it. I mentioned it in the emails. I put it on the, the, on the agenda. Is this, is this long? It's one of the longest speeches. Mm -hmm. 15 yeah. to 20 minute keynote address. It's my mistake because I didn't confirm. I thought Mike would know, but hey, it doesn't matter. Mike doesn't and I, I should have mentioned it to anything. Ron. Yeah. So I, I'm kind of, I'm not to get it together to begin with, but when I see green, red, the heck with it. That's, that's the challenge right. again, just with those doors have lowly in lights because I felt I cut you off. And, I, and it was afterwards, that was not a rhetorical question because I honestly did not know that it was 15 minutes long. Or if I did know, I hadn't retained the information. And that is a prerogative of being my age. You don't have to retain the thing. Uh, <laughs> it's not short term <laughs> memory. It's in one ear and out the other. So to give you the answer, you were eight and a half minutes. I know now well, I will do it again some amount of time to really adhere to it. Well, and, and Mr. President, in terms of that, if we have a 15 minute to 18 minute schedule, we need only two speakers. Yeah, absolutely. I, I right. think w the, I the key. To block in two, two yeah, the, the key is to actually plan for that in a meeting where you can accommodate a 15 minute speech in the meeting because 
with three speakers, we, we didn't ha quite have time for that. And the challenge is, of course, to keep your audience with you for 15 minutes, not ramble, because there is the inclination to say, you've got plenty of time and you can get on point. And the answer is, no, you can't because you lose your audience. So moving on quickly, we're out of time. Gina, how long was your speech to have been? Five to seven. Seven minutes, 45 seconds. Ooh. Just to let you know. Okay. Now, table topic, one to two minutes. Noon, you were perfect. Perfect. You spoke from the heart and the correct amount of time. Well done. Good job. Also, Shola, you were on the first one uh, just a hair short in your table topic, but boy, you were excellent when you evaluated head fits ends. Two minutes precisely. Also, you gave some information how he could improve as well. And I like the fact he was so strong that when Michael came up, he reiterated your point. I, like you, felt that tonight it should have ended at the fish saying something or Ted should add another exit line. And Michael reiterated that and you said it first. So he's, this is a speech in progress. So we've got Ted, we've got everybody. George, excellent. Uh, your evaluation of Anka now was four minutes, just to let you know. And Ted, again, your evaluation is two and a half. The meeting was excellent. The meeting, yes, sir. Didn't we say how long was Oh, sorry, you're exactly right. Yours was unbelievably profound. It was four minutes and 25 seconds. And he said to me and to Mike, to uh, green at three, caution at six, and drop dead at seven. So yeah. four minutes, 25 seconds, you have an opportunity to add another lap line. So, Mr. Postmaster, this is a wonderful piece. Evaluator and all of your speakers and evaluators.